Okay, we're recording now. This is on my on my Twitch stream, so if I if there's some chat that I talk to, that's that's what you're hearing. So uh YOLO, what's up? What's up, Oxted? How's it going? Like that. That's me talking to chat. Um, I'm gonna try and bust this out in like 15 minutes. Sometimes it takes around that much, sometimes less. This sketchbook is like super long. Uh not like number of pages, but Usually this takes me about a month, and this one is not technically done yet because I still have one more drawing at the end, but I'll talk about that later. But this is uh, going on three months, but I have been filling other sketchbooks while I do this. So like I finished, I think, two or three other sketchbooks in the last three months. So it's not like I haven't been drawing as much. Um, you guys know that. Also, I just finished, like, literally in the last month, I had a pad of paper that I filled with Star Wars Inktober drawings. So like... All of those have been ripped out so it's not really a sketchbook anymore because all the pages are ripped out i could do a sketchbook tour of that too but it's all stuff you guys have seen so so yeah we're, go we're gonna we're gonna go through this i got my crimson lotus tea i actually just ordered another cake of tea from them yesterday and uh yeah There's some drawings like i said from three months ago it feels so long ago but i did a bunch of uh costume with the like pen sketches in here. Uh, this was in preparation for my Warrior Primates um, cards that I worked on with uh, my Peter Hahn mentorship not too long ago. So these are just studying stuff from World War II. There's a little bit of extra stuff not from World War II in here, but different outfits. So these are um, basically the Japanese uh, Navy from World War II. There's some various other things, like little foot studies here and there. Um, but yeah. Here's the rifle that he's holding. Arasaka. I like drawing guns a lot. It's pretty fun. Um, it's very hard. You have to be like really focused. Because <laughs> if you start getting wobbly lines in there, it looks kind of weird. But um, This, it was really awesome. I found like a, um, a website that does... What are they called? Um, not reenactments, but they, they, they recreate old outfits and remake them from like different military time periods. So there's like photos of people wearing like a recreated outfit of the Normandy paratrooper gear. So not only could I draw it all together, I could also find each individual item on the website and draw those um, off of the figure, which like having all of this in my mind and knowing that it goes on here, it like really helps with the imaginative thing. So it's pretty cool. Also, like knowing the function. These are fun pages. Here's a Red Army Russian sniper. They employed uh, like a unit of women to do it. It's pretty cool. They kind of just employed everyone. And it wasn't really employed. It was kind of like slave, <laughs> slave soldiers. But these are Wehrmacht. I really like these. Um, Back when I was little, I played this game Call of Duty United Offensive, and um, I have vivid memories of the campaign where you're holding out in a church and sniping as a bunch of, um, in the winter, basically, as a bunch of Germans, like, rush you, and they're all wearing these big trench coats, and it's actually pretty hard to find a photo reference of these things, so I searched long and hard to find a good good pose, um, and whoever worked on that video game must have, like, gone to a museum or something, but... Um, yeah, it's pretty fun. The German army, they all their outfits were custom tailored by Hugo Boss, all the officers. So they all had really nice looking outfits. They wanted to look clean. Um, and they did. So they're pretty fun to draw. This was a request my buddy asked for of the... Uh, it's like a black ops unit from Vietnam. They worked with... Um, local Vietnamese to go like deep behind enemy lines and do like covert ops and like hardly any of them survived. Pretty crazy. But they had like basically they customized their outfits and they didn't wear like dog tags or, or identification. Um, and they had all sorts of like interesting things like they covered everything in electrical tape so they could be really stealthy and nothing would like bang together. Um, and they like customized their weapons in weird ways. They like would get attachments for other guns that 
you know, didn't fit and they'd modify them to fit. Um, it's like a grenade launcher that they would saw off. So it was really like mobile. It's crazy. In this sketchbook, there's a lot of like little 10 minute or draw from memory sketches um, for my Twitch. So like, obviously I'm on Twitch right now streaming this, but for the recording sake, <laughs> you can use your channel points to redeem like, hey, draw something in 10 minutes or try to draw this from memory. So there's a lot of things in here that are like, this is a draw from memory, I think, like a wolf or a fox or something. Looks like a fox. It's a little... Uh, RAF helmet. I love sketching that kind of stuff. It's really fun to just like get lost in all the hatching and values and texture. Sometimes you get a little too lost. I think these, this is kind of like a wasted page, honestly. Like when I see this, it like bums me out because like the way I put it on the page and like the, the level that I took it to is like just like wasted, you know? Like <laughs> what else can I put on, you know? It's like a thumbnail page. I did like a A commission that was like Loki alligator, I think. I don't even remember. Dude, want to become famous? Bots are back. This is insane. It's been ages. Sorry, on my Twitch, there's you know, always these these people popping out of nowhere. Time out. No ban forever. Later. Okay. This is a ten minute sketch of a little bear. Pretty cute. Little little toesies. Just some warm ups. This was a, I think, a Saturday sketch night on Twitch. We drew this buffalo amphibious tank. The proportions on this thing were really hard to get right. There's a lot of really subtle angle changes. Um, this is a, another 10 minute sketch of, I think like a, a German shepherd, maybe. And then I think there's a big break between this drawing and this drawing, but I went to, uh, the Tacoma art museum. This was a sculpture that I, that I sketched. I would like to go back and draw it some more, honestly, from different angles. Um, it's pretty fun. This is also from that day. It's Casey up on the balcony. Enjoying the sunshine. That's an eye eye. I honestly, this is like my least favorite animal. It's just terrifying, but I really like this drawing. It can turn out really nicely. It's got a lot of form to it. Some more warm ups. Uh, more warm-ups as well, some clothing. This is all from memory. It looks really bad. <laughs> um, and then this is a Saturday sketch night again. We drew um, Han Dynasty Warriors. It was hard to find reference for these. Uh, Oxted asks, how many hours a day am I drawing? Probably between 6 and 10. I know that's a wide margin, but yeah, at least six, usually no more than 10, usually, sometimes more. <laughs> Just depends on how much I have to do. But I set a lot of deadlines for myself and a lot of, um, you know, commissions also come rolling in. So um, through Patreon. So like every, every month I have like, you know, at least three Patreon commissions to do for people. And then I also may have like an extra commission and then I work on comics every week. Um, I do a Saturday sketch night every week. I am doing Inktober right now and that's at least an hour every night. Um, and then I have class homework. So that's like this behind me is like homework for class. And then I usually have other stuff I got to do too. Monthly design challenge, you know, that's on my Twitch. That's like another, <laughs> you know, five hours a week, maybe there. So it all, it all adds up, you know, and then I also just like to draw. So I draw stuff for myself in there too. These are more warm ups. Hatching practice. These are really scratchy and rough. It's weird. Sometimes I got it. Sometimes I don't. 
I think the only way past that is just to constantly be doing it and you'll never not have it. But if I stop it for a while, I go back to try to hatch that. It just, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a point where I'll have done it so much that my baseline is just high. But right now my baseline is still kind of scratchy. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of like a good um, indicator of like how good you are, how skilled you are. Is like on a bad day when you haven't drawn yet and you're feeling gross how well can you draw like what is your your draftsmanship level um i kind of felt that way when i played drums too this is from another saturday sketch night japanese boar when i played drums <clears throat> there'd be days where like i hadn't played drums in like two days or something and i'd show up to like a gig obviously i still play drums but like when i was playing regularly <laughs> and like i'd show up to like a gig or like a jam session and like whatever I was comfortable playing and I didn't mess up while I was sitting there playing, that's like my baseline, you know? When I'm not taking risks, I'm not like trying new things and I'm just comfortably sitting there, like that is like the, that's the thing I wanna improve is like how comfortable I am in that situation. So that's kind of how I feel about drawing too. And with drawing, I feel like it's kind of like, what can you draw with no reference? And how good does it look like? How comfortable are you with like simple forms and lines and shape building and like composition? Like all those things that we always work on fundamentally. And then your visual library, that for me is kind of like the baseline. Without a reference, without any warm ups, like what can I comfortably draw and have it look decent? And that's like, that's the thing I'm trying to improve constantly. This is all just more warm ups and little sketches and things, um, some texture studies. Um, another Saturday sketch night here. Big wasp. This thing is so wild. It looks like it has a massive stinger coming out the back, but it actually lays eggs through this tube. It's really weird. And like, yeah, it does this. It like folds upwards and like dig. It burrows into the ground, like it drills, and then it deposits an egg through that into the middle of like uh, a piece of wood. It's wild. They're pretty harmless, actually, to humans. But they can dig through wood. <laughs> but if I saw that, I would freak out. No, thank you. That was a 10-minute sketch. Zombie gator. Two things I've drawn very little of. Zombies and gators. So it's not the greatest. See, this is like a baseline thing. Like, if that's my baseline, <laughs> uh-oh. We need to work on that, you know? So then I know what to practice, you know. Draftsmanship, zombies, hatching, scale, texture, alligators, reptiles. Like, those are all things I need to practice more now. Uh, this is a draw from memory, Stitch. And considering, I think it looks pretty good. It's not cute like Stitch is, but it looks like Stitch to me. I remember, like, the little cut out of the ear, you know. It's got six six arms or six limbs. Uh, ten minute sketch request again. There's a lot of them in this book because I was like drawing in other books and then someone would request something and then I would just pull out this book and do it. So oh, Archer. I don't know why that nipple looks so weird. This is another Saturday sketch night. We did like a um, landscape night and we found some landscapes to draw. This is a weird one. I don't know why we chose this. It has a lot of different things going on, but the composition of the photo is not that good, in my opinion. There's a lot of weird like overlaps and like textures that just don't make sense. So, but I drew it, <laughs> tried to make it better. Also, the hatching is just oof. What is going on there? You know? Baseline. Gotta, gotta raise that baseline. Uh, this was a thumbnail that same night for another piece I did. I got that right here. And that turned out really nice. That's on its own little piece of craft paper. I had it lying around forever, and I was like, alright, I'll just draw on this. I want to do like a nice drawing. I could probably sell this for a fair amount, I think. Right now, it just lives in my house.
Marvin from memory, Popeye from memory. Or no, these are from memory, and then these are after I looked up a reference. Cartoons, like people, I don't think give cartoons enough credit. They think it's like a a, a kids thing. Like, I, it's not like a fine art, you know, so I think they don't get as much credit as they should. It is so hard to draw this consistently and accurately, and the way the shapes are arranged do not fit human anatomy, but they do, you know, like... You have to really be smart and know how to use shapes to come up with something like this and then to also move it around and animate it is like very hard. Um, like his cheeks up here, he's got this huge butt chin. That's his mouth. His other cheeks up here. It's, it's so weird, you know? But like, it looks good. It's such a like iconic thing. Um, and it's very hard to replicate. And also like the line weight and stuff. Like the lines here are garbage. <laughs> and they were just pounding it out, like making it look so good and animating it. Um, I don't know what's going on here. I think I was just... Oh, someone asked about markers and streaking. So, I was doing a little marker thing. Yeah. That was just a little experiment. I drew a, a goofy monkey. And then I had this new paint pen that I wanted to try. Sometimes I just like to grab random supplies out of my box. Um, and try to draw stuff with it. So, we got interesting results from that but it's a good thing to just stay fresh it's a good way to warm up too like i have to make a drawing with these like five art supplies how do i use them uh this was was this a saturday sketch night i don't think it was this is just me studying doggies for my comic that i'm working on on patreon the main dog character is this breed so i honestly need to do like many more pages of this to get comfortable with drawing it instead because right now i have like a generic dog that i can draw but it's not going to look like this breed what's up paladins fight how you doing welcome in we're just doing a little sketchbook tour do some more of that dog it's funny sometimes how terrible my thumbnail is compared to my final it's like weird but that's the point right like if I had stopped there, it'd be like, okay, that's terrible. But instead, I took it farther and it looked better, you know. Same here, you know. Like, the thumbnail doesn't look bad, but the final definitely looks better. And the thumbnail is also pretty big. Like, <laughs> not a huge difference in size here. Uh, this was a Saturday sketch night. This was uh, a rainbow blanket octopus. If you haven't seen this before... Google it. It's crazy. It looks so weird when it moves in the water. Here's another drawing of it. It actually is like a rainbow. And then it's um, two of its eight legs have like a blanket attached to it that help it swim. It's nuts. It's also immune to like jellyfish, certain jellyfish stings. And it will take broken off jellyfish tendrils and use them as weapons. It's a really, really smart, weird octopus. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so this anatomy class that I'm taking, this is actually interesting because I have it right behind me. Um, this was from the first day, and it was like, let's, here's some poses, try to draw them, basically. That's what we did. You have a minute. So these are my one-minute poses on that first day before any instructions. Um, and they're pretty rough, you know? Like, they do not look good. <laughs> Um, they sort of only look like people. Um, and this is after three weeks of doing it. And then also there's some anatomy on top. But like if I showed you, you know, like this, you know, these are also all like about a minute, you know, and this is after I did 200. And they look way better, way more energy, way more clarity. Um, they're just more interesting and satisfying to look at, appealing. There's like balance and motion rhythm so um the class definitely helped um a lot and there's a chunky raccoon uh this is another 10 minute sketch request i think the exact wording was wolf with a little mouse friend on his head holding a sword so i drew that without reference and then i did not like the way the mouse looked at all 
So then I found a drawing of a mouse, and they're so cute. I did not capture that chubby cuteness there. <laughs> that looks like a field mouse with a big feet that hops around. How's it going, Fire Lord Revan? Welcome in. Here is a uh, another Saturday sketch night topic we did. By the way, that's tomorrow, if anybody wants to join in. 8 p.m. Pacific. I really like drawing this stuff, um, and I think it helps with, like, drawing characters from imagination, knowing, like, all these little accessories you can put on them. Obviously, not every character is going to have a pistol or a canteen, but just in general, like, knowing how these things fit together and fold around a body. Here's it folding around a body. Same, same belt. It's good fun. Uh, these are draw from memories. I drew... Kevin Costner from memory, and the dude from memory. And then this is uh, also from memory, the Countach, <laughs> a laughable attempt. And then this is after I found reference, of course. I've studied this car a lot in the past because it's so cool. Um, but not enough, apparently. There's like certain rules that apply to all sports cars, and until you learn them, you have weird attempts like this. I have not learned them yet. A uh, 10 minute sketch of a loath wolf from Star Wars. 10 minute sketch of Ahsoka Tano. 10 minute sketch of Bastila Shan. That's a character from Knights of the Old Republic. I don't know them. These are also, after my anatomy class started, we did like this head construction method, and then three hours after that lecture, I did some of these for my imagination. And that's super cool, because I, you know, had never been able to do that before, and now I can do it. It's really fun. You know, they're not realistic, but they're semi-realistic, you know? They're not cartoony, so that's pretty fun. Good head head drawing method. Last week's Saturday sketch night was Venus flytraps. A fun thing to study. Plants always seem more simple than they are. Uh, these are more heads from imagination. I'm still not really getting the... The profile is like a hard thing. You gotta memorize these angles. I'm not there yet. The eyes are too high here. Oh wait, the Venus flytrap was two weeks ago. This is from last week. Saturday sketch night. Sushi. And these turned out pretty good. I like how they look. Especially these eggs. Most. All right, these are like some of the most cursed drawings I've done in a while. I was trying to draw Winston Churchill as an orangutan, or the other way around, I guess. That was my first attempt. No. Here is my second attempt. Mega no. It's terrifying. Don't look at that for too long. And then my third attempt, I kind of did a little bit better, I think. I went way closer to monkey than human. It just looks like a monkey, honestly. A monkey in Winston Churchill's clothes. Um, one thing I could have done here is made the clothing a lot wider. I feel like big boy, you know? Um, and then the other one I did was Hitler as a monkey. It's like a Patas monkey. And then we have the final page of the sketchbook. Normally, I end every sketchbook with a Star Wars drawing. I still plan on doing that with this. But all of my Star Wars drawings right now for Inktober are on this white paper um, that I have. So I don't really want to like take time to do a Star Wars drawing in here when I'm also doing a Star Wars drawing every single day of October. So what I think I'm going to do is save this final page of the sketchbook for November 1st. And I'll finish it. And uh, we'll be good, you know. But until then... I'm just going to leave it. 
So it's it's like finished, but not quite, you know. Um, and I'm already working on like two other sketchbooks, three other sketchbooks that are almost done. So I'm just going to call it finished for now. <laughs> um, and that is the end of this sketchbook tour, which I recorded, which I'm now going to stop recording.